In a truly despicable primetime segment, Fox News decided to celebrate the fact that South Carolina is on its way to passing a bill and signing into law execution by firing squad. Let's take a look. Yeah. Third one, this is a new one, shoot them, stick them or fry them. There are now three ways to die in South Carolina if you're on, if you're a no, death row not, inmate. That's terrible, it's, no, that's terrible. Listen, <laughs> they wrote it, I'm reading it. Late today, the state house there, this is a real story, voted to reinstate the firing squad as an alternative to lethal injection and elect, the electric chair due to a nationwide shortage in lethal injection drugs. Okay, so death, not firing only squad? do I not. Not only do I not have a problem with it, I would suggest to you it might be a more preferable means of, of execution. So first of all, individually, you gotta come to that conclusion morally. Statewide, you gotta have this debate. But here's the thing, firing squads are at least more honest about what you're doing. I think sometimes when we do lethal injection or whatever, we're trying to ease us as a society. Go to sleep. We're trying to ease our own pain that we're doing this to someone that, that we decided deserves it. Firing squads are just honest. Yeah, let's stay on that for a second. So these guys, as Anna pointed out, are, think this is hilarious, right? Or we could fry them, that, that, like where we basically we electrocute them to death, uh, uh, yes. you know, fry them to death, right? That's so funny. I guaranteed again, if a fundamentalist Muslim was laughing about frying someone to death, imagine if like a Black Lives Matter uh, protester jokingly did a chant about fry him like bacon, maybe they'd call him terrorist for the next 10 years. Oh, They did do that and they didn't do the frying and they were joking with a cop when they said that. But it doesn't matter, but here they're like <laughs> fry him, yeah. Or stick them or shoot them. Um, but guys, if you're in that camp, look at that stat Anna just read to you guys. So that means about 12% of the people that were on death row were actually innocent. Let's call it one out of 10 to round down actually. So imagine uh, that you're in favor of the death penalty and like the Republicans of South Carolina, you say, yeah, let's do firing squad, who cares? Then you line up 10 people who are on death row. You say to the people who are about to shoot them and murder them, one of them is innocent. But it doesn't matter, let's shoot anyway. And I'm asking you guys, I, whether you're left wing, right wing, etc. I'm, I'm left wing, I'm pretty sure. But really, if you're independent or right wing, I'm asking you. If you got 10 people who are lined up, nine of them are guilty and one of them is innocent and you know that based on the numbers. Would you shoot anyway? Would you kill them anyway? Knowing that you're about to kill one innocent person? Well, that's what we're doing as a state. Now I'm afraid to ask, what do you mean by an ideological battle and who is them? The ideological battle that says that regardless if you do not believe in my dictates of my religious philosophy, you have to die. Like I said, Shia do it to the Sunni, Sunni to the Shia, Al Qaeda does it to ISIS, ISIS does it to Taliban, regardless. But they're all doing it for one reason, establishment of a caliphate. The Middle East since Muhammad to Ottoman Empire had a caliphate in charge of it. They were very brutal to their citizens. And they killed their citizens who did not listen to their dictates. It was a religious and secular so-called combination of leader that was leading the entire caliphate. Once this divided during the British and French signing of the Sykes-Picot contract, which was a contract, and these so-called states were manufactured in the Middle East, these so-called leaders that were supposed to be secular, separate from their Islamic backgrounds, ended up not being able to control it. Why? Because when it came to the people, they could not really justify their positions. How do you justify your position if you're a king or a somebody who is in a prince position? You justify it by saying I am placed in here because of godly support. Well, when you had a separation of these particular divides of the religion and the also the secular, the only way, whether it was a Shah of Iran, Saddam Hussein or anybody else that was out there that was a dictator, when they realized that they're losing their base, what did they turn to? They turned to Islam, whether it be Saddam Hussein placing uh, Allah Akbar uh, on his uh, flag or the Shah in an interview demeaning his own wife because he had to placate to the Islamic dictates where the men are more superior than the women in the interview that was done even on ABC in the US. This is a problem you run into. As the Persian businessmen used to get up in the morning, eat in their houses, fly out to France, spend money as they wanted to, shop and then fly back after eating a late dinner 
and sleep in their own beds. These same individuals turned around because of an ideology and said, you know what? We are going to support an Islamic Republic that is now established in the region that has been based for terror for a number yeah. of years. Okay, so things- this is a problem. We never understood that this thing though is not going to change unless you okay. really Le- approach from the Middle East and Le- perspective yeah. of the combination of both. Lieutenant Colonel Singer, you're saying very dangerous things. You're lumping all Muslims together and and you seem to be generalizing that Muslims are the problem. And and then you say your only specific political point that you made that other than a general honestly bigoted attack against all Muslims all across the world was, hey, they're combining church and state. Okay, I'm worried about, it. I'm secular, I'm worried about combining church and state, but clearly, uh, that's what they're doing in Texas uh, by taking away abortion rights. So should we firebomb the citizens of Texas according to your ideology? No, listen, you could read whatever you want uh, into it. I, I think if you go to the tape, I pretty much laid it out. This ideology works in hand in hand. I have my own mother here who's a Christian who went ahead and opened up a, a just a safety deposit box in a local bank years ago with my dad. Uh, now my dad passed away two years ago, as of this September 14. When we went, when she went to close it out, the bank leadership, who's not believe, you know, following Sharia law, said you can't close it out. She said, I don't believe in your religious beliefs. I am a Christian woman. She said it doesn't matter. It has to be a man to be able to close it out. Okay, I get it. You the hate ideology Muslims. that I get he it. pushes. No, look, I lived at Mike's about. I've actually fought and bled for those individuals on the battlefield. So I don't want to hear from you if you haven't been on the battlefield of Iraq and Afghanistan fighting to save these individuals. Save them, I know, you got to save their village by burning it down. Here, I I promise this, so I got to ask you about your company. You you guys said you're a military advisory group for the Assyrian army in Iraq. This is a genuine question, and it's not ideological, I'm curious. How does a, a private contractor contract with a non-government entity and then get into the middle of a battle and help them militarily. Is is, is that legal in, in American law, international law? And can anyone do it? Can a, a number of people just go to one side or another and start teaching them how to kill better? No, you can't do that. Look, we support the Austrian Christians because they're getting butchered in bushels between 2014 and 2017. Uh, so when we got on the battlefield, there are multiple different companies out there that were operating. Uh, we did it in a way of an advisory to them. Uh, yes, we did operations at the tier one, tier two level, uh, and they had no support. We couldn't even get uh, a request for our bombing runs against uh, targets in Syria because uh, the Obama administration at that time did not want to even attack uh, oil convoys that were coming through because it might be an environmental hazard. Uh, so uh, the way we did it was we raised money, we supported the uh, families of those uh, soldiers who decided to go and fight uh, on the battlefield. And uh, we had a number of victories to where even at the uh, ISIS at that time declared the army that we had as a nuisance that had to be fought against when they declared war in their magazine against France. So look, um, I fought on the battlefields, I've, I know this enemy, I've, uh, I understand how he operates, it, uh, he operates in a uh, non-secular, uh, I should say a non-conventional way. And you have to fight him on his battlefield the way he yeah. does. Uh, yeah, you've been doing that for there. 20 years, and how's that working out for you? Um, okay. Well, look, uh, look, it hasn't worked out well, right? Because we, yeah, because uh, you keep killing your civilians, and then they hate you more, then they hate me more, and they hate all of us more, and it creates endless wars, which honestly is profitable for you, but is disastrous for the rest of us.